Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am super excited to tell you that I am here today with Dr. Andrew Blumenfeld. He is the director of the Headache Center of Southern California, and he is a person that can answer all of our questions on Botox. And that is our topic today. So without further ado, let's get started and ask him some of the questions I know we all have. Hi, Dr. Blumenfeld. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you for being here. So uh, let's start with some of the basics. Uh, What kind of headache is Botox approved for? So Botox is specifically approved for chronic migraine. A chronic migraine is a very sub type of migraine that's very aggressive. It uh, causes a lot of headache. Typically, patients can have headache nearly every day. They don't necessarily have to have migraine type headache every day. It's an important distinction. Um, you need to have a minimum of 15 headache days a month, and at least eight of those should be meeting criteria for migraine in order to get it approved by most insurance companies. And the clinical trials focused on patients that met those criteria. Okay. So can you just briefly tell us what exactly Botox is for those of us that don't really know what it is? Sure. Well, it's actually a natural substance because it's produced by a bacteria. There's a specific type of bacteria called the Clostridium bacteria. And that bacteria produces this toxin, which in essence is a protein. And the companies that manufacture these for therapeutic use purify that protein and stabilize it and package it and create a dosage that becomes safe for us to administer as long as it's injected correctly. Um, So the way I like to explain it to patients is that it's a purified protein Mm -hmm. um, that comes from a bacteria but you're not actually injecting a bacteria into the patient, you're injecting the protein. Okay, and why does Botox help people with migraine? How does it work? So it's a very good question because initially we didn't know how it worked. All we knew was that patients who'd received Botox for cosmetic uses found that it helped their migraines. Um, What has evolved since that time, which was in the early 90s, was that it gets into the nerve endings, particularly the pain fibers, and it blocks those pain fibers from releasing their chemicals. And so over time, it switches those off. The more often you do it, the better it works. We see this buildup of effect as it's slowly switching off these overactive nerve endings. Okay. Um, How effective exactly is Botox in people who have migraine? How effective is it in helping us feel better? So the way this has been studied is to look at what's called the response rate. And it looks at how many patients in a a clinical trial, what percentage of the patients get at least 50% better. Mm -hmm. So for Botox, after you've done two treatment cycles, about 50% of the patients who have done that will be 50% better. If you keep treating and you do five treatment cycles, there's a buildup of effect, and 70% of those patients that do it five times will be 50% better. Okay. Some patients do much better than a 50% improvement. That's just an average over a large population. There are also analyses that have looked at getting 75% better and improving by 75% is, is a massive improvement. And you see that in one in four patients who use Botox, they can potentially have a big effect like that. Okay. Um, so how often do people need to get Botox for it to be effective? Yeah, so it's very important that it be done every 12 weeks because it wears off. And with migraine, with any of the treatments, you don't want to let them wear off and let the headache recur. Mm -hmm. You want to keep the headache at bay. And the less time the brain is exposed to the cascading events of migraine, the better it is for the long-term prognosis. So with Botox, we don't like it to wear off. And that means doing it every 12 weeks on quite a strict schedule. 
Um, okay. So some insurance companies might only approve it uh, three monthly or 90 days, which is actually a little bit longer. We prefer 84 days, which is 12 weeks, uh, but sometimes insurance limits us. Okay. Um, so how many injections are involved each time and, and where do the injections go? So it's interesting, you know, we studied multiple different injection paradigms and eventually worked out 31 specific injection points. And these 31 points are directly above the nerve endings that carry the pain messages. So if you were to draw out all those nerve endings in the forehead, on the temples, the back of the head, the neck, the shoulders. There are 31 nerve branches that we can reach with very superficial injections. So none of the injections is particularly deep. Mm -hmm. It's just below the skin surface with a very small needle. It typically feels like a little pinch mm -hmm. and it is then gonna be right on top of the nerve ending. So as long as you're seeing an expert injector who knows where those nerve endings are, Mm -hmm. then you're going to get a good result. If you inject a cosmetic uh, pattern, you won't necessarily hit the nerve endings. So the targets are different. And we shouldn't think of them as the same treatment, even though the medicine is the same. The technique of injection is, is really completely different. Okay, I think that's an important point. Cosmetic Botox and Botox for migraine, it's a completely different technique, uh, often done by very different people. Um, so don't think of it as the same thing. Um, does everyone get their injections in the same location or locations, excuse me, or does it vary depending on where some of your pain is? Right, so... The trial was designed so that there were fixed sites, meaning mm -hmm. dedicated sites, and those are right on top of these nerve endings, and there are 31 of those points. And then there were additional eight sites, so for a total of 39 injections, that match up with where it hurts you the most. Mm -hmm. So that's called the follow the pain technique. So let's say your headache was just on one side of the head. Mm -hmm. And those additional eight injections could be done on that side in very specific locations. Whenever you do these injections, you have to always be aware that you're going to be relaxing the surrounding muscle. And the, re the relaxation of that muscle can lead to potential side effects, mm -hmm. uh, neck weakness or droopy eyebrow. And so the injections can't necessarily be exactly where the pain is because you have to always take into account what's going to happen with that muscle that's right there. So there is a technical aspect to this to minimize the side effects and to maximize the efficacy. Um, and so they, there are areas where it's very safe and areas where you shouldn't inject. Okay. So while we're on that topic, let's discuss really quick what the side effects and possible contraindications to bug shocks are. So the main side effects are local. In other words, it doesn't get into the system and travel around the body. So at the injection points, you can see some relaxation of the muscles. Mm -hmm. So in the forehead, for example, you might relax the forehead muscle so that the eyebrows don't elevate as much. Mm -hmm. In the neck, you might relax the neck muscles, and that might cause a little bit of neck weakness or neck discomfort. Obviously, because it's an injection, you could get a bruise or some discomfort from the needle itself. Mm -hmm. These are the main side effects. They're actually very um, mild and transient. They don't last for very long. They may last a couple of weeks if you produce a, some weakness, but not typically for months. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing systemic. It doesn't uh, travel to distant body parts. Even though the label, the Botox label, cautions patients that it's a, a potential risk. We've never seen that in any of the headache patients. Right. Okay. Um, are there any contraindications? Is there anyone who shouldn't be getting Botox? Well, we, we don't like to inject if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Um, that's uh, in the label that we shouldn't do that. But, but other than that, um, unless you've had some sensitivity to, to Botox in the past, like an allergic reaction, which I've never seen. I've done more than 30,000 migraine patients over the course of my career, mm -hmm. and I've never seen an allergic reaction. Okay. Um, 
do people notice a difference in their migraine or their pain right away? Does it take a few weeks to notice a difference or a few cycles? You did mention that people do get better over more cycles, but do some people notice a quick difference? Yes, we've studied this, and what we see is that it takes about a week to 10 days to start working. Okay. And you can start to see clinical benefits in the first few weeks, and then it builds up. There's a definite buildup of effect mm -hmm. the longer you're on treatment. And even in that first cycle, as you progress into the second and third month, you'll see an increased benefit. And then when you do it again, you see an increased benefit again. So what I usually like to tell patients is don't focus too much on the first treatment. Don't expect a lot. Um, maybe a little reduction in intensity. It's the second treatment where you start to see the frequency go down and then that'll increase with the third cycle. Mm -hmm. The trick is to, to stay on treatment and, and to be patient with it. Um, and then it has this buildup of effect. I think that's an important point to get across. Don't feel disheartened if you don't feel significantly better after the first treatment. Um, I, I find myself saying that to people a lot. Can Botox be used in pediatric patients who experience chronic migraine? So we did one study in uh, patients that were 12 to 17 years of age and showed that it was safe. There was no increase in side effects in that population. There isn't a formal study that's been done in patients younger than 12 years, but in my clinical practice, I've used it in adolescents, um, and there've been no ill effects, there've been nothing of concern. And certainly if you had a patient who was doing very badly, had chronic migraine, had failed on other treatments, that would be something to think about, but it's not an on-label use. In other words, the studies that we used to get at FDA approved looked at patients who were 18 years of age and older. Okay. And um, does it usually, does Botox usually continue to work over a patient's lifetime? Do we have an answer to that question? Well, you need to keep doing it every 12 weeks. The longest trial that we've done is a two-year study where we did nine treatment cycles every 12 weeks. And mm -hmm. what we showed over the two years was that there was progressive improvement. It kept getting better for each of the cycles. Mm -hmm. It didn't plateau. It okay. continued to improve. And you get to a point where the patients have headaches so infrequently that you can consider weaning them off. Oh, okay. We wean patients off by increasing the treatment window. So instead of doing it every 12 weeks, you go to 16 weeks. Right. And as long as the headaches don't come back, you could wean even further. So I have a subgroup of patients who maybe are coming every six months. And then there are others that we've been able to wean off completely. And uh, the headache hasn't returned. Um, certainly in stressful times, the headache may come back. And then we'll put them back onto treatment. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Um, is Botox covered by most insurance plans? You did touch on this, um, that the frequency may be different based on insurance, et cetera. But... Uh, are we having trouble with some insurance plans in Botox or is it covered? So Botox is very well covered. It's covered by the government insurance plans like Medicare exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. uh, commercial plans do cover it, provided patients meet certain criteria. So firstly, they have to have chronic migraine, mm -hmm. more than 15 days a month of headache, eight of them being migraine days. Mm -hmm. Then they also require that the patient try two oral medications that are preventative treatments. Mm -hmm. But these would be medicines that they're taking every day to try and prevent their headaches from coming. Mm -hmm. And if they developed a side effect to those treatments or they didn't have efficacy, then mm -hmm. that would count as failure. Um, and as long as they've done two of those and that's documented, then they can progress to Botox and it's pre pretty well covered by most insurance plans. Okay. Um, so is there anything else? That's all the questions I have. Is there anything else that you think people should know about Botox and migraine? Yes, I think that the focus for migraine patients is starting to shift to a concept of migraine freedom. And what we mean by migraine freedom is that the patients will be able to get better control of their headaches and have more migraine free days. And the best way to achieve that is with combination treatments. And so you look at treatments that don't have a lot of side effects and you combine them 
and hopefully in a synergistic way to get better control of the condition. And Botox forms the foundation of many of these combination treatments. So we're starting to use a lot of Botox in combination with the CGRP monoclonal antibodies and the two treatments together are definitely giving an additive effect mm -hmm. and allowing us to get closer to migraine freedom. Okay, that is great news. Um, I would like to add that the National Headache Foundation has a number, a hotline that you can call to ask questions about your headache disorder and someone will work really hard to uh, help you get a good answer if you have a burning question that you need an answer to. You can call 888-NHF-5552. That's 888-643-5552 if you have a question you're having trouble finding an answer for. You can also leave questions in the comment sections of the podcast. So thank you so much for joining us this week, and thank you so much, Dr. Blumenfeld. And we will see you all next week on Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.